everyone and welcome to another video. For those of you who are new to my channel, hi my name is Brenda and today I have a pretty different video for you. So this is still related to nail art and all that type of content but now we're going to be looking more about the behind the scenes of what it's like creating content for either Instagram or YouTube and how do I film all my tutorials and like the YouTube shots and all that stuff because I do get this question a lot and I'm not gonna lie that makes me feel really good it makes me feel like I'm doing something right and I just want to be that person that can give you the most helpful tips that at least I have from all the time that I have been creating content which is almost four years so I have been in the low and just have struggled with it and I feel like now I have reached that point where I'm very happy with the content that I create so I do want to share those tips with you. It is going to be a long video and for me anything that's over 15 minutes is a long video but if I want to be helpful I do have to get into full details so once again I'm just gonna give you all the tips that I could possibly think of plus many of you also left me some questions on my Instagram that I'm going to be talking about. We're just gonna jump right in. Before we continue please don't forget to subscribe and also at the end of the video if you like everything that I have to share with you please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. So I do have a lot of notes right here. So as I said first, this is going to be a full on details video. This is also going to be targeted towards content creators. All my other content is for sure nail related, but this one right here is mostly for people who's looking to step up their game when it comes to filming tutorials. All right, another thing, since my equipment has changed over the years, I do have a video on how to film um, nail tutorials and nail content without professional equipment equipment and believe it or not that's one of the most watched videos on my channel it is an old video so it is kind of embarrassing just to look back at it but it seems like it has been helping so much people up to this day and I probably posted that like a good two or three years ago I keep getting comments on that video saying this was really helpful and all that so I do want to say that this is going to be giving you a little bit more towards the professional side even though I do not feel like I have like very crazy expensive equipment but we're going to talk about it here soon. So I think by now you know that I do take very seriously this whole uh, filming stuff. When it comes to my content, I'm very perfectionist. So I'm going to be giving you my advice and from someone that obviously creates nail content and someone that consumes content because I also know the things that I like whenever I am looking at somebody else's videos. All right, so in order to have this a little bit organized, I'm going to break this video down in different segments. The first one is going to be equipment and that is going to cover camera, lighting, and background. The second one is going to be editing and that is going to be for videos and pictures and then the last one is just going to be a lot of helpful tips because I do feel like there's a lot of good tips that I have to share that do not really fall in under those two first categories so I just want to like have a little section of helpful tips at the end I guess. All right, so many of you submitted questions and I'm just gonna insert them here so you can see some of them because most of them were really all about what camera do you use, how do you set up your camera, how do you set up your lights, what about backgrounds and all that stuff. So I am going to cover all these, not specifically answering to each question, but just like in general because most people wanted to know the same thing. So we'll start with the equipment and that is going to be the camera. So the camera that I have is this one right here and this is the model and I just want to say that I never ever used a professional camera before but I do feel like this one was very user friendly and very easy to use. What I like the most about this camera is that it had the little flipping screen that you can see whenever you're filming. One more thing that I really like about this camera is that I could change the lens so that is huge. By now I really don't have intentions of getting a bigger lens or something that is different because because I honestly do not know much about cameras but I do know that some lenses are better at capturing at getting like close-up shots and all that kind of stuff but for now I'm really happy with what I have but if that is still an option so I think that's something really good I wasn't really aware of it when I bought it but I do see the benefit of having that as an option in the future the only downside of this camera is that it does get heated very quickly and after 30 minutes or so of recording it is going to warm up and then it's going 
going to shut down. I don't do everything in one shot. I do take multiple clips because, you know, I gotta let the first coat dry. So I will turn off my camera, then I'll turn it on, apply the second coat, and then I'll turn it off and so on, you know? So I'm always taking breaks in between. So I think that does help me a lot. So my camera doesn't really get like very heated because of that reason. Someone asked me how I set up my camera and I'm going to show you right here that you want to make sure that you place your camera close enough. I try to put it and like set it up as close to my nail as I possibly can without it getting blurred because that's another thing. If you're like way too close then it's gonna be blurry and then you don't want that because it's not gonna look pretty. I actually made a video on how I created my little setup for nail tutorials so while I'm going to show you how I set up everything there is a dedicated video on how I built my little filming setup and that is just like a super helpful video. Really you're going to notice and I'm gonna go through it in this video there is nothing besides the camera that is crazy expensive and it just like made a huge difference on how I film my videos and how easily it is and how good it looks. As I said in my other video I was using my phone before and I remember saying I'm never gonna get a camera and really I am so happy that I invested in a camera. I know a lot of people that use phones to film their tutorials and to take their pictures and trust me some of them are really good. My cell phone isn't that great. I don't feel like I can take good pictures with it. I didn't feel like I was getting the most out of my phone even though I had good lighting. So the camera is really good at capturing details that cell phones would not and I'm talking about something like shimmer and also when you take pictures of like your manicure and stuff it just like really captures every detail for good or bad I do feel like if you already have a clean hand and clean cuticles that is going to be super helpful because it's just really gonna focus on the nail and all, every single little detail so I could really go on about it and it's just so great ever since I got it it has really helped a ton with my content I know that having a camera is a big investment and the fact that I use it for my nail content doesn't mean that I do not use it for other stuff so if you want to see it this way don't get a camera just for the sake of making a video I use my camera a ton for like special events to take tons of pictures of Selena and I really get the most out of it so I don't see this as investing in just my nail content but also for like keeping lifetime memories of my baby growing up and our family and all that stuff all right, and before I move on to lighting, I want to show you real quick here, and as I said, there is a dedicated video about it, on what holds up my camera and my light. This is funny because I didn't want to use tripods. Tripods take too much space, and it's very hard to manipulate them and make them work. I do have some of those flexible tripods, but really, I do not want to have a lot of equipment on my table when I already have a bunch of nail polish stuff. It just like gets very messy and very clustered, so it was just very frustrating to try to like adjust everything and fit everything in one place. I know a lot of people uses those uh, clip on things you put on tables and then like the little tripods are like flexible. I hate those. I tried them. I don't like them for myself and I'm sorry but I don't like when I see other people using it because I don't like when the footage is bouncing. Especially if you have it on a desk as soon as you move, everything else is going to start moving. And I know, I'm saying this because I said I'm very perfectionist when it comes to these. Obviously, I'm not the best, but this is just something that really bothers me. Um, and I got one before to hold my phone when I was filming with the phone. And it was just something very frustrating, so I would not recommend those things at all. So these are pretty much like projector holders and I'm going to leave the link if they are still available. But pretty much these ones were meant to hold projectors off the ceiling. So you're supposed to screw it on the ceiling and then the little bit part hanging is where the projector would go. And I just found these to be amazing. They have different sizes but I got the shortest one because the closest the light is to the nail the better it works. Obviously you will have to like move it around a little bit just because you don't want it to be like super bright and then like you can't see what you're doing but that's a complete other thing so that's just something to keep in mind all right so I do feel like a lot of people feel like they have to buy ring lights for this I do have a ring light for this shot right here but because it covers more it makes everything looks nicer but whenever it is for nails if you have that big ring light over it all the light goes around it and it doesn't really get right in there where you want it so your shot and that's looking um, a little bit dark I would say so I know that they do have like some medium size that might be like this big maybe like my face I don't know about my light 
exciting. I am unable to find the exact ones that I have right now. I really like mine. I love them, love them. And this was an investment. I honestly do not feel like they were that expensive. And honestly, if you feel like you're being serious about creating content for nail art and stuff, just might as well go and buy them because I did buy like so many different type of lighting before that I spent way more money on those crappy lights than I should have just gotten the good ones right off the bat because even though it was like $50 or so, it was a lot cheaper than keep buying lights that didn't work out for me. And I just can't rely on natural lighting either for my pictures or for creating my videos. I know some people do it, that's just something that does not work for me. All right, another benefit of the lights that I have is I do use the exact same for filming my nail tutorials as I do to take my pictures. After I'm done with my manicure and filming, the lights stay exactly where they are. I don't even have to move them anymore. As you already saw my little nail setup, everything stays in place and I just happen to leave it in there for either my videos and my pictures. I do not use a light box and honestly I wouldn't recommend one because some of them are sometimes expensive some of them come with the L little LED lights and stuff um I don't like them especially if you're trying to do white background you're going to need better lights than just those that the box has for it to actually look white I tried about two or three different light boxes before I found my current lighting and it was just so frustrating because even when I had a camera I couldn't get like a really nice white background like really the lights that I have are so awesome that I do not need a light box I don't need anything around it all I need are my two lights and I'm good to go uh, real quick I want to address this question because I think it's very important she says that her lighting is too yellow and the quality of the video is too bad from zooming so the first step the lights that you find like everywhere else really that are just like regular lights they all have that yellowish undertone so it is obviously going to reflect on your videos and that's why the ones that I have since are more like professional and studio lighting they are like white light even those lights that you can buy that are like LED lights and stuff sometimes they are not strong enough and then even though they won't give you that yellow undertone they are still not going to be bright enough for like the good quality of the video. And about the second part, that is exactly why I said that try to place your camera as close as you can, even though you still have to zoom it in during the editing. If you just do all the zoom from the editing, it is going to mess up a lot with your quality. Even though my camera is as close as I can be and I zoom it in good enough for it not to be blurry, at the time that I'm editing my videos, I still have to crop the clip just to make it even closer and this has been working perfectly for me so you have to find that perfect balance that even when you edit it you are not taking a uh, good quality out of the video right and now we're moving on to the background and I do not really have that many tips on this because this is like super simple at least for me I use a white background because I do feel like just having that plain background doesn't take the attention from what you're doing like what you really want to showcase is your nail and what you're doing with it rather than having people like focusing on what's around it I use plain white paper because if you are working on your nail and you spill a little bit of nail polish on it it's very easily replaceable or I sometimes I would just like keep flipping the page around until it, it has gotten all dirty and then I will recycle it but if you have like some fancy backdrop and stuff and then you ended up putting some polish on it or something and then you can remove it so I wouldn't even waste my money on that just get plain white or black paper that is very cheap and easily replaceable and then you're all set oh and here's another perfectionist tip I'm not a perfectionist person to start with but these, these little details like they really matter to me uh, try to make sure that your background is in place that's another thing that I don't like whenever I see people and their background is like moving like if they slightly move their hand like you can see things moving around um just put a little bit of tape or something and just to hold your paper in place i happen to have like a little bit of a space where i can stick my paper and it won't move on my videos so yeah it's the little things but it does really matter all right and now we're moving on to the second section of this video 
I know, it has been a while. Uh, this is going to be for the videos and the picture editing. So we're gonna start with the editing of the videos. When I first started to do my nail videos, since I have an iPhone, I would use iMovie. That's a free photo editor. I'm not sure that it comes with it. I think you download it, but either way, it's free, so it won't really hurt you. Um, and I do feel like that was very user-friendly. I got it real quick. It worked very good. So while I was filming with my phone, it made sense to edit my videos on my phone. But once I got my camera, I did have to... I have a MacBook Pro, so I could also just get the iMovie for free. So I'm really sorry if you do not have any of the Apple devices. I can really help you with that because I never tried something else. Somebody asked me if my video editor was very easy to use. Uh, the one on my phone, yes. The one on laptop, that was a little bit challenging. But you can find so many videos on YouTube, like the basic stuff. I do remember watching just like one video that was like 15 minutes or so. And really, I just got everything out of it. And then over time, I, I learned to use other features. But it wasn't really anything that difficult. It's just like at first, it does feel very overwhelming. Because, I don't know. It, it was just like a little bit challenging, I guess, for like the first two or three videos that I edited. And then after that, it was just like, yeah. Yeah, I got this. The same person asked me if I do voiceover during my video or after and I would 100% recommend to get all your footage edited and then do the voiceover. It is going to give you the ability to just talk over the things that you already want in the video. If you have not edited and you start talking, by the time that you narrow it down to the things that you wanted, you're gonna have this long audio and now you're not gonna know how to fit it all in that little footage. So what I do is like, I just have the clips that I need and then I know how much time I have to speak over so I can like, you know, do my tutorials and stuff. So I used to speak as I was filming but I did find that it was very difficult to get to edit both things at the time because besides making sure that you have the right clip you also have to make sure that it matches when you're talking and that was so time consuming and if you and if you know everything I do you know I don't really have time to spare I know a lot of people like to do the talking while they are filming like you know painting their nail because they want to give the raw impressions of the product so what I do is that if I don't want to forget like usually I'm really good at remembering oh I didn't like this about this polish like when I'm looking at the footage like I know what I like and didn't like but if I do feel like something's just gonna skip off my mind I just write it down on a piece of paper and then I don't have to worry about this whole editing of the voice and the video even though most of video editors I guess you can detach the audio from the clip so you can edit it separately but why would you do that I, I honestly don't see the value in it so I would 100% recommend just do the voiceover after you're done with the editing talking about voiceover and this is really not necessary but I would highly recommend if you are using somehow professional equipment like a camera and a laptop to edit your videos I would highly recommend getting a microphone even like a $15 cheap microphone will do it for you and this is something that I had to learn the rough way because I was editing in my computer and then every time the fan will go on and I was trying to do a voiceover you could hear it and it was just so annoying so it also captured the voice in like nicer way because it blurs all the background sound and stuff I'm starting to sweat here but I promise I'm almost done here is probably the biggest tip that I'm going to give you about editing and especially saving your video because it doesn't matter if you have the coolest lighting and the best camera if you don't know how to store your video I was making this mistake before you have to learn what resolution you need whenever you save that video for YouTube or whether you're saving it for Instagram when I do film videos for YouTube whenever I'm saving them or exporting them or downloading them they go into this category right here if I am saving that video for my Instagram then I do it in a lower resolution and that being because once you post that video and if it's like the resolution is really high Instagram is going to somehow convert it to like their crappy setup so just be very careful with that I feel like YouTube is a little bit better with that because you know it's a different platform so on YouTube I do feel like I can save them 
on a better resolution and the videos are still going to look good. You can also play with the quality. I always go for high quality. So uh, just keep an eye on those two details. You can also do the same thing on your phone. If you're editing on your phone, it's going to give you those same options too. So just remember, what are you saving that video for? Is Instagram or YouTube? And then choose one depending on that. All right, and now we're coming to editing your pictures. And that is probably one of my biggest struggles. It was taking me so long to edit pictures. I feel like lighting is really what's gonna do it for you. Whether you're filming with a camera or with your phone, lighting makes a huge difference and that's just gonna save you so much time in the editing process. Now that I have nice lighting and camera, what I would recommend is best thing is have your cuticles and everything as clean as possible and just save yourself time editing also make sure that you take your pictures immediately after you do your nails because sometimes you're like oh i'm just gonna grab some water and whatever and then you end up messing something up then your picture is ruined so make sure that your cuticles are oil and everything is going to look good then you're only going to have to do some minor touch-ups at the time that you edit it if you decide to do so all right and i do know a lot of you are very curious about the photo editor that I use and that is PixArt. I have the free version of it. I do know they have tons of features that you can pay for but it's not necessary. I know some people use different apps for filters and to fix the lighting, to uh, watermark the pictures. I feel like in the end whenever the most apps you use to edit that one picture you are just like taking quality out of it because the resolution keeps changing every time that you're saving it. So in this app Oh my god, you can do so many things. So many things, that is my go-to. I do everything in there. And I honestly could do an entire video on it, but for now, I'm just gonna let you know that that is probably the best way to go. You get to do everything in one place. And if you like my pictures, then you probably know that it really works because I know so many of you like my pictures and all my minor touch-ups, the watermark, the little blur around the nails and stuff, everything gets done in that same app. So I would highly, highly recommend it. And we have made it to the final section of this video and these are tips out of the context of all the other stuff that I have already mentioned because because everything that I share here were, were tips anyway so and these are uh, some questions too that people ask me. Uh, someone asked me if I do try my nail art beforehand. I do plan ahead like I do know what polishes I'm gonna use for what design and I do kind of make it in my mind. When it comes to like actually practicing before filming a tutorial I just do it on my other hand. I have mentioned this in the video getting to know me I think I actually have a playlist pretty much what I say there is that I always polish my nails the same way I don't have mixed matching manicures I don't like that so whenever I have my idea of what I'm gonna do I always do entirely my other hand and then if something that I did in there I do not like then I change it whenever I am going to film you know my left hand which is the one that I filmed. For one of my latest manicures I did something a little bit different on my accent nail that I didn't like so I knew that I wouldn't do that whenever I was filming and I decided to switch it up a little bit and that way I don't have to like refilm because honestly I do not have time for that. All right and then be wise with your time and footage. And someone asked me something about how I organize and stuff my desk. First off make sure you have everything handy. I do this all the time. Whenever I'm doing a manicure, I pull all the colors that I'm going to be using, all the materials. Anyways, I have most of my brushes on my nail desk so whenever I'm filming it's everything on the go so first off I will do a shot of the products all in one clip I do this first thing before I start um, painting my nails you know those little clips that you see of me rotating the nail polish showing the brush or the colors or whatever I do shoot all of that at the same time and then I just spread it through the video once I have all of my um, uh, clips that I'm editing Another thing, and this is just going to make your life easier, do not delete your until you are done editing your video and until you're done saving it. Because I did this in the past whenever I imported things to my laptop and while I was editing, I was like, oh, I'm just gonna delete it off my camera and then something went wrong with that clip and then I don't have a backup for it. So now, because I learned the hard way, make sure that you delete them after you are done with the video until you have it saved so you know that you are not going to miss anything and then you don't have to go back and film on something that you're missing. And one of the biggest tips if you are both on YouTube and Instagram, 
learn to recycle your content so usually whenever i do videos here on youtube because those are longer videos like if i do like swatches of an entire collection i want to leave that clip i would actually break it down and then reuse that on my instagram and i'm not sure that you have noticed this before but mostly i show everything first here on youtube and let's say i have a collection of six nail polishes and i swatch them then i will make six little video clips that then I can share on my Instagram and then I'm like being wise with my time and with my video footage because I only do it once even though I don't post it right away then I do have content to keep on posting so like I can uh, you know have something to show all right and we have made it to the end. I hope that I answer all of your questions. If by any means I miss something, please feel free to uh, leave me a comment. I'm going to try to link all the products that I use below so you can have an idea or maybe you can find something similar. And those were all my tips just because I feel like I have somehow nailed the filming of my nail art tutorials and swatches and many of you seem to love them. So I really appreciate your feedback. I'm so happy to hear that you actually enjoy what I post. I cannot give you really much advice about like the headshots like this filming this because I don't really pay that much attention to it for now all I have is a ring light and then I have this backdrop that I got off Amazon very inexpensive and I don't have anything professional hanging it up there if you saw my nail room tour you probably saw my little funny setup but it works for me so really I'm not that worried about the human part and I just really try to focus most of my efforts on my nail tutorials and swatches so that was for sure a long video I do really hope that it was helpful again please share with a friend that you think will benefit of it because I do know that at some point I was that girl trying to figure out things watching like 20 videos of these nail ladies showing up their setup and I just never liked the idea of having this huge lighting setup to film a little nail art tutorial and so I do feel like my setup is just perfect because it doesn't really take that much space I can carry it around with me if I wanted to which I wouldn't really do but if I need to film in another room I can easily move it it's so tiny it's really really helpful to have it already set up so you don't have to worry about setting up your lightings and your camera and all that before uh, filming your nails because it is time consuming so anyways those were all my tips let me know which one was your favorite and if any of these is something that you could actually put in practice now I would love to read you in the comments thank you so much for watching don't forget to subscribe to my channel and I will see you on the next one goodbye